This hand is going to be all about Naza here, whose real name is Jao Vieira. For those who don't know, he's one of the best tournament players in the world. Facing off against two of the other best tournament players in the world, Michael Adamo, who's I'm Luckbox, and Ben CB, who's, you know, Ben CB. Um, these guys are really, really good. Uh, we're going to talk mostly about Naza's decisions in this hand because he does things kind of phenomenally throughout. But let's start here with the flop. Preflop is all pretty standard. Is check raising the right play? A lot of players are going to feel more comfortable check calling here, even when there's a bet and a call. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? You close the action. It only costs two blinds. You don't get blown off the hand. Even though there's two spades on the board, we have a premium draw where we can, we've got you know, six outs to the nuts. And sometimes when the spades come um, but make us a straight, we're still good a lot of the time, yeah. right? Because Adamo can have, as we see, almost anything. So now we're really just up against Ben CB's range here. Of course, Adamo can have good hands too. Right. But Ben CB clearly has something. He's yes. usually got spades or one pair, mm -hmm. right? Almost always. So so calling makes a lot of sense. However, raising is kind of great because as I just said, Adamo can have anything. As we see, he so folds immediately when, he could, when the raise does happen. We have a lot of fold equity against him. And Ben CB, I don't think we've got a lot of fold equity right now. Like I expect he's calling a lot because he usually has spades or a queen, but he probably also has some medium pocket pairs. Nines, tens, eights, yep. hands like that that he's probably just going to throw away right now. I think he is. Yeah. Because like... You have, to, you have to fold something, right? Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. You don't block the things you want to block. Yeah. Uh, um, and even if he has a queen or a spade or something like that and calls this check, right? it's like, of course, he does. We're going to have great opportunities on the turn and river to bluff him. Um, I think we should be going for it when, if a spade comes because that's, well, sometimes he's got spades. Every time he doesn't, I think we're just going to win. Right. right. He's got a lot of queens in his range yeah. as, as played. And also, Zhao has a range advantage here against both opponents. Which, this is important. He has queen three, queen six, and six three. Definitely in their suited iterations, but maybe also unsuited. It was one blind to close the action. He, he might have all of the two-pair combos available. It's possible. I'm not sure if he has queen six or not, or queen three or not. It's unclear these days what some of these guys are doing. Yeah. But that is, it's, uh, it goes back and forth. But certainly, he's got some queen sixes and some queen threes and six three, which the other guys just don't have. Right. So all of these are good reasons to raise. Yeah. I think I like the raise better than a call, although I wouldn't be mad at a call either. I think that's a fine play. Agreed. So this is just the beginning of a beautiful thing that's going to happen here. Speaking of beautiful things, let's talk about that monthly Poker Guys tournament on Nitrogen Sports. There's always an overlay. It's great fun. It's Bitcoin only. If you win, you get your money fast. What else is there to say? I mean, you will weep. I'll say that. You will weep with joy when you use the link in our pinned tweet because that's the only way to access that tournament. We'll see you there. All right, that might have looked like a simple check raise triple barrel from Jao Vieira. But upon further inspection, I think you, kind viewer, will be convinced that this is a master class in tournament poker by Jao Vieira, also known as Naza here. I Just crushing it with these decisions. Let's start with the turn, because this feels like a relatively simple thing here, right? Like the three pairs, and we have to decide whether or not this is a good card to bet. And sizing isn't really that much of a consideration yet. Trust me, sizing is going to be a big deal here. But the three pairing is honestly not that great of a card for our story, right? Because on the flop, we were mostly saying we're, we have one of these two pair combos. This does turn some of those into full houses, but more critically, it reduces the amount of combinations we have. So it's mathematically bad for our story. That's a problem, but it's not a big enough problem to stop, right, Jonathan? I think it's not a big enough problem to stop. We 
by betting here, it's so cool. By betting here, number one, we get to still try and realize our equity. Like we can hit a card to make a straight, yeah. which is great. We don't have to pay a lot to do it. If we check, we assume we're getting bet and we're going to have to fold a lot, right? Yep. It's going to cost too much. But Javier sets his price and sets the right price so that way he can draw perfectly fine. Like that's, that's, those are reasonable odds he's giving himself now. And you figure you can't really ever get raised Ben can only raise with a full house. Yes, because Javier, of course, while the combos are reduced, does have full houses in his range. Yeah. He still has all of those hands that he was repping on the flop as value in his range. So if you're Ben CB and you have a flush draw, you can't be like, I can't let him get to the river that cheap. I have to raise now. You can't do it. You right. just can't do it. You can't take a queen and say, I need to protect my equity because you're just getting crushed by the continuing range. You just can't do it. That makes this so beautiful because Zhao knows that he can set his price without worrying about folding a hand that has equity because if he gets raised, he has 0% equity against the range. You would So think it's fine to fold. It seems like that's the case. Um, also, not only do we get to draw at the correct odds, like the price we're paying and the chance of us hitting our straight are, is about right. right? Yeah. It's about 20%. Um, but we now, because we bet, preserve our ability to get folds on the river, right? Yeah, even if we don't improve. Right. I mean, I guess it could go check, check sometimes and we could take a shot, but I don't think it's going to happen very much. We've been CB on either a good queen or on spades. And I just think they're both betting a lot if we were right. to check. Or maybe right. a slow played monster, but if that's the case, right. so be it, you know, and it, it, maybe he'll raise us now and then we get to just get away from the hand. Right. Um, so yeah, this is beautiful in every way. And, and part of the masterclass, like I said, is the sizing. Cause if he made it 450 K in order to preserve all of these same things, he's not giving himself the right price to do those things. And he's getting called by basically the same range. Yes. So there's no value in it at all. It's much better to bet 260. He really crushed the sizing. We also preserve more of our stack. So that way on the river, if we want to take a big shot, we have more weapons to do so. We've got more ammunition to do right. so. Right, and he, he preserved that ammunition, and he did get to the river, as expected, against the queen. He probably expected to get called most of the time yes. by a queen or by spades. The spades come in. Now, the spades coming in might seem bad because it's a queen or spades, but Ben CB is definitely playing a queen this way all the way, and he's not definitely playing spades like that on the flop, right? Right. So that means there's more combos of queens in Ben's range, most likely, than spades, especially considering his preflop calling range against the under-the-gun range. Um, so going forward is not like a disaster here. Another time here that Naza nails the sizing. This is great sizing because it does the same amount of threatening that a full all-in does, but preserves 10 blinds in case it doesn't work out. This is a thing I think that most players miss. I mean, good players, bad players, everybody, myself included. We get to this point where we've got less than a pot size bet back or about a pot size bet back. And, we, and we're bluffing. But actually, this is true for value too. But we're bluffing and we want to get max fold equity. And we think the way to do it is to put all the chips in play. But betting a big chunk of your stack should get you basically the same amount of fold equity almost always. And then you preserve something too. It it's, feels like not a big difference, but it's a massive difference, right? If, um, if we get called here as NASA. We're still in the tournament instead of just out. Right. And this is very important in tournaments in particular because, of course, tournament life is much more valuable than cash game life, which you can just buy back into. So, of course, as a good player playing against other good players, you have to also do this when you have a monster and miss out on a little bit of value sometimes. But overall, it's worth it because tournament life is worth so much. Right. And that's why this is such a beautiful bet. It also is a card where it's like, yeah, I could have spades too. That, that's one of my semi-bluffs. I could have gotten here. Ben has a lot of, of one pair of queens, and he might not call with any of them. If he's calling with any of them, it's like king, queen with the king of spades or ace, queen with the ace of spades. Right. Turns out he doesn't have a spade. We don't know what would have happened, but it seems like an easy fold for Ben at this point, right? He can't really do anything but fold. I think he has to fold. Um, if he has the ace of spades in his hand, if he has ace, queen with the ace of spades, I think he's going to feel forced to call. Um, maybe even the king of spades. Unless he feels like he has enough actual flush combos that he can be That's okay. Right. right. You're right. But as we, when we like sort of went over the flush combos in our podcast, anyway, we thought like he didn't have that many actually, right? right? So probably he's going to feel forced to call with the ace of spades. But that's okay if you're job because that's only 25% of those combos. Right. So it's fine. And Ben maybe can even have some other queens that aren't in play either way, like queen jack suited, queen 10 suited, which wouldn't have spades right. in them at all, but felt forced to call the turn because yeah. we bet so little and now is almost certainly going to fold. Right. So this is beautiful in every way. I mean, yeah. there's nothing, taking nothing away again from Ben. I think no. Ben actually played every street perfectly as well. It's just that Zhao's decisions were based on sizing. So it's a more difficult game to figure out perfectly. And it seems like he figured out the turn and the river just perfectly. And it's a beautiful masterclass. Yeah, this is um, like Mozart. It is. And by the way, he won the turn 
tournament, which was well deserved based on this hand. Indeed. This just might be the best played hand, or the most perfectly played hand anyway, we've ever done, where it doesn't feel like anyone made a mistake of any kind and maybe even like elevated themselves, like the Jao Vieira plays feel like elevated. Like I didn't even think how that you could make a play that good, you know, and then he does it. And it's like, oh, that's even better than what I would have done. Um, do you guys think any mistakes were made in this hand by anybody? Uh, I guess you could talk about Ben CB not three betting pre flop. He could have raised the flop. I don't think that's normally a good idea, but let us know if you think that this could have been played differently and if there are better ways to play it. Do you like ultimately Jiao pulling the trigger on the river? It worked, but spades are a big part of Ben's hand. And I don't know, Ben does have a big spade in his hand sometimes too. And he's probably calling when he has those. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. If you're on the fence at all about checking out the podcast, this is a good one to check out because we go into the podcast without really having formulated thoughts at all. This video, we formulated the thoughts for it on the podcast. I went into the podcast thinking this hand was about Ben C. B. I left the podcast knowing this hand was about Naza and how he sized everything perfectly. And going through that process is important. It's instructive and it's fun. Highly recommend it. Check it out. The Breakdown Poker Podcast. Get it wherever you get your podcasts.